Alaska Hisa, the Director of Learning and Engagement. And welcome you to ICALA. Thank you for coming out. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're going to begin with a tour. This whole program is uh, our buzz philosophical provocations. And we are going to get uh, into it with uh, Rosson Venceslavov, Carmen Argote, the artist, and Amanda Stroka, the senior curator at ICALA. I'm just doing quick housekeeping. We have provided me, bios for you on the seats, so elaborations on each of these wonderful individuals. Uh, Rosson is a philosopher, teaches uh, at his faculty at Woodbury University, teaches philosophy, uh, the philosophy of architecture, and is also um, a performer. <laughs> Carmen Argote is the artist for the <laughs> exhibition right now. I won't abandon you. I see you. We are safe. And Amanda Sroka here is the senior curator. So um, I just want to say that next week we have an, a final program for the show. Um, it is called In Process um, Collaborations uh, and Process, Exploring Collaboration and Process during the course of the exhibition, there were five collaborators are just alongside Carmen Rigote, and we will discuss what happened. We will discuss what happened tonight as well. Um, and then uh, that, and the show closes on September 10th, so we'll have time to come back. All right, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Amanda Roca, who's going to walk us through. Um, here you go. You can say a few words, but then I have to, we have to stop the microphone and do job. it different. Job, job. <laughs> okay. um, I don't think um, I'm going to the Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to meet. We are going to head right into the gallery. Let's look at some art and talk about it, and then we'll come back here. Um, feel free to leave your drinks and food wherever you're sitting. Kind of hold your spot, maybe. <laughs> here you go. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Is that? Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Why don't you try it so you just make yeah. sure? Yeah, I think so. I think it works. Great. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. Let's do it. Okay. Um, so I thought it might be helpful for how many of you have already walked through the exhibition or been here before today? Awesome. Okay. Um, there's a handful that have, there's a handful that haven't. Um, I, I think for the sake of um, yeah, just welcoming you here, I um, joined the staff here at ICALA in September of last year, so about a year ago. Um, moved here from Philadelphia, and Carmen was one of the first artists who I did a studio visit with. Um, I had known Carmen's work and I've um, been a fan of it for some time. Um, I actually went for an ICALA meeting because Carmen is a co-chair of our Artist Advisory Council. Um, and that meeting quickly turned into a two, three hour long studio visit um, where Carmen shared with myself and Ann Elgood, our, director, our executive director here, um, a body of work that was unlike anything of Carmen's that I had ever seen before. And I left that studio visit thinking about the work um, and still thinking about the work and had the precious opportunity to organize these shows um, for the summer season and immediately knew that um, Carmen's work and, and Carmen was the perfect fit. And so in the true spirit of our institution, we are, we kind of pride ourselves at ICALA as a museum of firsts. And um, I feel so honored and privileged that this is the first um, Los Angeles Museum Solo Exhibition that Carmen has had. Um, and it is one um, that is, marks a, um, another kind of first for us as an institution. And something that we're gonna talk about um, a lot tonight, I imagine, is very much, um, the relationship that the show itself has to process and to collaboration. And um, when we started on this, um, and this journey of bringing um, what Carmen calls the Mother Series, this body of work that we're showing here in these galleries um, to ICALA, um, you know, some of the questions were, were really around, you know, where is the work now and where, what does presenting this work mean? Um, mean to you or making it public in some way. Um, this, the, the Mother series, and we can kind of, I'm just gonna talk as we, like let's walk around and talk. Um, and then if there are particular works, 
Um, but the mother series itself is um, less about biological mothering, although that is also a component, and Carmen's own mother is a collaborator in this show. But it is about this psychological mothering. It's about a uh, remothering of oneself and about a cultivation of the mother and the child within. And um, this, the works that you're seeing, the show isn't installed chronologically. Um, this body of work has been in process over the last three years, which started with Carmen's own walks through, through Evergreen Cemetery, where um, she made these uh, beautiful mother rubbings um, of, the tombs of tombstones. And you can see two of them are on view in the galleries. Um, but we chose within this show to um, not really have a beginning or end, but to kind of honor the circular um, form of the mandala in um, Jungian psychology and psychoanalysis, which it comes up in a couple of Carmen's drawings, um, one of which is on, on the wall there. And those works are so special to me in relationship to the show and this body of work because you'll notice there aren't a lot of wall um, labels or texts beyond the intro text because um, the, the works are really, like the art is speaking when you walk through this space. Um, but these works, these three really offer kind of language and grounding of the words and affirmations and questions, um, as well as quotes that Carmen has kind of gone back to over and over again on this journey of remothering. Um, something like with that kind of echoes that circular shape circular shape is all around the galleries you see these um, sculptures on the floor and these are what Carmen terms comforting objects and even as we're standing in the galleries right now Carmen herself is kind of holding this comforting object that was made um, during the run of this exhibition um, and has had a couple different forms over the course of our time here um, and the comforting object is a, a form that um, within your practice, you can return to and return to again. Um, can you share a bit, Carmen, of like what that what that is? Yeah. So I mean, I was feeling a little nervous, so I got the uh, the comforting object to kind of hold that part of myself that was nervous, so that I could be here, more present um, and uh, integrated for for all of you and. Um, yeah, I think that's part of the remothering, to be attuned to um, all the parts within myself. And so it's a very ac like active thing. And then it's, it's always surprising to me how material can hold a part of myself. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I've, I think this is like the second walkthrough I've done with the comforting object, and it works amazingly. <laughs> so I'm really, <laughs> it's like a soothing thing too. So I, I I'm appreciating it's it's constant you, like I don't know giving generosity yeah and you talk about that I mean that's something that I think within um, your work that is a is a constant from you know bodies of work that you've done before is this kind of like such a distinct relationship to materials as like a form of communication and as a carrier um, and container yeah in so many ways. I think of the work as documentation in many ways because it's the process of making it that is the artwork. Um, and then what is left, the remnants, is the documentation of the action. And so whether they're like flat works where the action was the projection of the uh, things on the wall in my home studio into the surf onto the surface of the work, um, or in terms of the comforting objects, they're making, they're braiding, they're you know, um, construction, um, that's, that's, the, that's the art. And then what you see is like um, the, doc the documentation that holds that action for, for the taking in of, of, of others. So. And I think with that too, um, I'm gonna move us because this walkthrough, we're not gonna get to talk about every body of work, um, but our, our, we're gonna kind of um, instead structure it around really what we're talking about tonight. Um, and in thinking about like the work itself as documentation, um, you know, I think it's important to, within this, to also point out the various documents that you're leaving with us about this, this exhibition. And so, um, as you kind of come around the corner, just be mindful of this kind of row of eggs here. Um, you know, one of the one of the invitations, um, as I shared with, with Carmen, was to kind of think about where is this body of work now, and um, 
And in addition to that, like how can uh, an artist whose work is so much about process, um, and how can we how can we hold that within an exhibition context? And how can the exhibition itself um, invite a conversation about process? Um, and one of the things that you know we talked about with um, when I asked you, Carmen, is like, what does it mean to you to have your a, a solo show at ICALA and you're a city that you call home? Yeah. And I didn't know. Yeah. Like at the beginning, you know, so like I was like, ex <laughs> I don't know, but I've been finding out exactly like what it means and what. I can do so. I do have chickens, mm -hmm. and I tend to the flock. And um, you know, I began um, bringing an egg every day to the show as part of my walking practice because I also have a walking practice. I walk about uh, an hour every day. I try to um, sometimes two. Um, but it was tending to the show first. It was bringing an egg. Um, as a way of tending to the show, and then it sort of transformed into being here, being present, um, working on the collaborations here. I basically started doing a almost like a residency in the kitchen, so a residency within the show, um, and I really enjoyed it. What does it mean to be able to walk to the show and be with the work and continue to converse and engage and see the work? Uh, um, you know, make a miniature of the work, mm -hmm. um, something that was made so uh, embodied, like, you know, with the body at my scale, um, at my shape. Um, you know, what does it mean to really see it and have that, that kind of distance from it? N um, I'm learning a lot about, um, you know, going from like a, a state of disembodiment to a state of embodiment, and then being able to kind of spiral back to, um, not embodied, but outside of the negative connotation. Hmm. So outside of fear, how do I look um, at a different scale, like or like from a different perspective? So that's that's what it's been meaning to me to, to be here, and also like getting to work with you as a collaborator, yeah. um, and with the collaborators also, you know, five collaborators and Amanda, <laughs> six, <laughs> six. So it's. It's a lot. It's always been like on, ongoing, ongoing. And then I brought my chicken, and that was the whole thing. And so, I mean, just like the negotiations and navigations, I think that's been a really interesting part of this work. And I would say that, like, wait, wait, you're talking about Carmen of like being able to, like, I mean, this is the first time that you're seeing most of this work outside of the context of your studio. And I would say in addition to um, the eggs, which we should talk, we can talk about more as like, you know, that was a text from you the day we opened the show of like, I've decided I'm going to, you know, as part of my, my um, you know, walking practice, I'm gonna to walk to ICALA every day and I'm going to deliver an egg. And I was like, was the egg raw? Is the egg, like, where, how are we gonna place it? Do the, are they gonna smell? You know, there were like all these uh, questions and, you know, but also like, you know, that space of like, hey, I'm going to try this, I'm going to do this, and then what comes out of that. And I would say that like the drawings that you see on the wall, particularly in this gallery and as you turn the corner, um, you'll see these notes and these are also you coming back to these works after experiencing them. Um, the works, their subjects, their postures, their themes um, within the context of the exhibition and within the context that you're now in, in your life, which is different than they're making, which is different, yeah. you know. Yeah, that um, was really scary writing on the museum walls. <laughs> uh, kind of brought a lot of fear. Is Amanda going to like me? Is she going to be mad? It was like, am I'm going to do these drawings. <laughs> I'm gonna do these drawings on the wall. <laughs> yeah, am I overstepping my welcome? I mean, all of these fears, you know, have been in conversation, so that's been really interesting too. And I would say, I mean, one thing that I think set the tone for the whole show was the fact that, um, you know, the, the very first work that we installed in this show was one done in collaboration by all of the collaborators who Carmen invited. And in, collaboration isn't new for you as an artist. Um, but it is something that, like with this exhibition, when I when I asked Carmen, like, what what can this exhibition offer? What does the Mother series? What does the work need right now? And one of the you know collaboration to work really intentionally in this kind of moving so much of the work is about your own interior journey and in individual in so many ways. 
but then to kind of move outward and to be prepared and feeling equipped with the tools and the questions to move outward and to invite other people into that journey with you in a new way. Well, it's like, what's the point of doing like this inner work? You know, how do you put it into practice? And you, you need relationships to put it into practice. And so it was the work that was like, posed the question, well, how can the work be more generous? Or how can the art be more generous? And it's really only in relationship to others. And so it was like my closest friends. And it's like, well, how can I be more intimate with my closest friends? How can we grow in intimacy? How can we continue this relationship uh, and go deeper? And um, so with one of the collaborators with Daniela, we've been going to yoga, you know, and then that also led to a miniature walkthrough. It's like really giving that space, um, being able to communicate where there's fear, I think. And I also asked Amanda early on, I said, Amanda, I need help. I need you to help me push my edge with this show. Help me push my edge. And so I don't know, I still don't really know what that means, but um, I think it's, it's, it's going on. It's been ongoing for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> I would say like when it was also like an invitation, I think at that same time too, for like, Carmen, how can you push our edge? Like, or the institutional edge to understand how we can show and share um, and represent this work that can give, it, it in so many ways eludes traditional museum presentation context. So how do we share it? How do we talk about it? And I would say like something that is so generous about you, Carmen, and just like, um, you know, it's, it really isn't just the five collaborators who you've been working with. I would say that like in, in addition to me, you have, by taking up residence in um, the museum and really um, being with us every day, you've, you're also tending to the relationships of the staff. And also, you know, I mean, multiple staff members, many of whom are here, can relate to like talking to Carmen in the kitchen and it going from like, I just, hey, how are you? To like somehow like we just went deep into like family drama and are coming out of it, you know? Um, or, or being able to, um, yeah, just I think yeah. that that, that tending goes um, and also extends to visitors. I can't tell you how many times like Carmen would be sitting in the, the lobby in a different configuration than it looks now, but working on these miniatures for this project um, program with Daniela, and if a visitor came in and would start talking with you, you just, yeah, and you'd walk people through the show, and like just, like endlessly generous, which I don't wanna like also take for granted, and like also the great privilege we have of, of hosting you here, um, and kind of that reciprocity though that comes with, being open to like what your edges are and it's also being open to like the many ways in which that can manifest. And with the role play with my mom here, so I've been doing um, sort of like erotic rope binding with my mother and it's been, I don't know, transformative. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I even have that memory. So being here with this rope, I'm just like, and it's so interesting because it creates a play space. I've been thinking about the play space, which is like a place that's not public or private, and Winnicott writes about this. But it uh, kind of creates like a, like a private space, an, an intimate space even within like a public space. And so I've tried to navigate that intimacy within like a public space. And you've been talking about this idea of like the studio and the museum trying to find that in between. Yeah. Um, and I think I've been doing that in my own way as well. So that's been really interesting. I feel like we should go yeah. have a, you know, I feel like this is a nice segue. I would say before you sit down, um, feel free to poke your head in the kitchen, the staff kitchen, which I'll point out, which is where Carmen has taken up uh, further residence. Um, yeah. Talk about public and private space. It's an interesting thing. So oh, I'll, I'll, I'll open up the kitchen. Yes. All right, so I think we could, I could just start by thanking everyone for being here and also um, thanking the ICA for hosting this. Amanda, obviously, head curator. Um, Carmen Argote, who's gonna inspire and instigate in her own way that the exhibition is so generative. I'll say a couple of things about my role here, my ridiculous role, um, but um, before that, thank you, um, Askahisa, for 
uh, being the hostess with the mostest. And then, um, you know, your entire team, the ICA is a, a second home to me and a, many of us. Um, I like to say that this is the most fearless art institution in Los Angeles, and we, uh, tonight's event is probably another uh, notch in that belt of glory. Um, so why am I here? We've done um, an event series um, before called the uh, Boxing Philosophical, which was meant as a debate, philosophical debate on subjects of art. And so I've infiltrated this institution in a um, different way from what Carmen has done. But infiltration or infestation is probably a proper word, uh, <laughs> suitable term. Um, and now I find myself excited about the show. I've communicated with Carmen. I wouldn't honor myself with the term collaborator, but I'm certainly a fan and an interested party and um, an interlocutor. Um, and I, I'll actually, I'll do something very sneaky and inappropriate. I'll quote from an email that um, Carmen and I yes. were exchanging about a year ago. Yes, um, so um, why philosophical pr provocations? Well, because this is, this is actually a very philosophically driven show in its, in its uh, the massive reading that it, uh, on which it relies. You know, Mary McGuire, part of Mary McGuire's uh, contributions have been bringing these uh, piles of books that are not only read, but they're also dragged around and roped up and uh, performatively engaged with, and then also whisked away, right? So this is one of the sort of these um, process um, aspects or layers. Um, but it's also because there's a bunch of these questions that are being discussed in philosophy. And sorry I'm not facing everyone, but it's never the case that I do so when I recline. Um, it's, um, it's so ripe for discussion in the, in the world of philosophy. So one of, the, one of the issues is the ontology of an artwork. Where, what is an artwork? Is it a process? Is it an object? When does it start? When does it end, right? There's a, but there's issues in feminist philosophy about you know, motherhood and also uh, motherhood and art and the relationship they're in. Um, and then most recently, there's a book that I actually was lucky to be invited to review by Sherry Irvin. She's one of the big names in feminist aesthetics. Um, the book is, the title is Immaterial, and she talks about uh, the rules of contemporary art. Basically, the, I mean, loosely, the argument she makes is that contemporary art is no longer just about uh, the material object in any sense not just about the idea, but also about the rules that the artist set up, uh, sets up. And the rules are actually a part of an aspect of the work. They're, to the extent that there's, that there's works that are just rules and nothing else, right? To, and which is why the book is titled Immaterial. Um, and you know, we could, I mean, there's so many examples, Stanley Brown's little maps, right? I mean, it's sort of like it's an instigation, it's a, it, um, out two strangers on the street, and essentially there's nothing material to it, right? And, but it is a rule of, um, of some kind of behavior that he uh, proposes as an artistic uh, gesture. So anyway, all of these things that philosophers talks about are relevant, uh, talk about, uh, are relevant to the exhibition. And so walking through it, thinking about it, and knowing Carmen's process, and having visited her studio, and having been uh, in touch with her over the past year and a half probably, over this body of work in one way or another, um, has made it pertinent for me to, to suggest that we have this kind of conversation and then Asuka and I were brainstorming and then of course everybody was so welcoming and sweet about it. So I'm, I'll try not to be an asshole and uh, some of the questions and provocations are not going to sound friendly but they are meant in a friendly manner. Also we have fruit and uh, little nuts and stuff around us. We're supposed to be eating them so in a minute I'll be chewing on a peach. Um, I cannot resist an emoji. Um, so three topics that we wanted to discuss, and we've, uh, we've very loosely uh, brainstormed, but um, it's a lot of the stuff that I'll be saying um, is new to Carmen and, and uh, Amanda. So this is supposed to be also uh, sort of uh, uh, by the seat of our pants uh, uh, imp imp improvised effort. And also hopefully we'll integrate everyone in, uh, in the audience in, um, once we're done sort of like hashing out some of these notions. But the three, three topics I wanted to discuss um, are, one is the issue of motherhood, right? And how that plays out in the art and, you know, in this exhibition, but also in the, in, uh, the sort of theoretical and art historical context. The second is the issue of, of process, of work as process or show as process, right? And what does it mean and is it a performance and where is the, what, what is the role of the object and so forth? And then, which is more of an ontological issue if you ask philosophers, it's about what is and what is not and, and what the difference is and so forth. Um, and then the third um, question is um, the relationship of 
this kind of work to an institution, and so that has to do with curator, uh, curatorship, but also custodianship, but also hazard, um, but also um, the, the part of the public, right, the, uh, for a public-facing institution in this kind of show. So starting with the, with the first um, topic of mothering, which, you know, we was already broached, I was, you know, just as a preliminary, I was going to say that, you know, a lot of feminist literature talks about the mother as scrutinized from the outside in. And so there's this, you know, there's an objectification that happens. And there's also, there's also, um, at once, the, the invisibility, uh, uh, mm -hmm, the uh, rendering um, of, of motherhood invisible, and at the same time, fully legible in these um, material um, ways. So there's objectification, but there's also a disappearance. And so a lot of feminist artists, you know, Susan Hiller is, a, is an example. She, she had the show in 1979, uh, 10 months, and it was all about her pregnancy. And so it was descriptive and pictorial, right? But essentially, um, she laid it out, right? And she's, uh, and you know, part of the argument that gets made, made by in feminist, um, art about motherhood is that motherhood is continuous with personhood and it's also continuous with uh, with one's art. And there's no, none of these boundaries and they, uh, they, they, we don't have to have them and these are imposed from outside by an uncongenial world. Um, call it patriarchy, call it the institution and so forth. So I love this because your, your show talks about it and, and, and plays out some of the scenarios of, of resistance and also some of the fault lines of radical uh, reimagining. And you know, of course, we're not talking about gestational motherhood in the classical sense. You know, there's, it's more of a metaphoric proposition. But my question is, my burning question is, the title of the show. I want to abandon you, I see you, we are safe. There's an I and a we, mm -hmm. and for an artwork which engages the public and which is meant to, and which definitely has been, and I think of it, I mean, I speak of it as an artwork, but of course it's a show, but in important ways it's also a cohesion or a constellation of, of aspects that you know, amount to something like a Gesamtkunstwerk. Um, what does it mean to have the I and the we, and how does that play to a broader public audience? I mean, I, I don't know if you can hear me. Is it on? Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, I won't abandon you, I see you, we are safe. I'm, it works, I mean, it works for me and to mother my inner child's, my inner child, basically. I won't abandon you is for the feral one who doesn't speak. I see you is for like the one that's two years old and wants to be seen. And we are safe is for the 20 year old that usually stands uh, diagonal to me. Um, and is uh, full of fear. So the reason is that the language works. Um, those words, I won't abandon you, I see you, we are safe, for some reason work at, for these different stages of development within my remothering process. And I do think about the title as the last uh, artwork before the show started, really. Um, like in that in that series that was not collaborative, like before the collaborative action, but it's that's how I see it because and, and it's it's a it's it's a piece that's in use that I that I go on walks with and this is what I tell my um, inner child selves and uh, it is a process of attuning, uh, being in, uh, in in my own mothering of the self, of myself. Can I uh, now quote you to you? Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> so we were, well, part of our discussion over email was about the comforting objects, and because initially they were known as comfort objects, mm -hmm. and I pitched this, uh, I mean, it was sort of more of a question than a, a um, assertion of any sort. Um, well, comfort objects objectifies them and, and makes them static in a way that your practice actually doesn't suggest, right? I mean, so it's almost like a betrayal in language, right? And we do, the, I mean, it's such a subtle thing. But, in, but once you say, I mean, even the way you were talking about it out there, you know, it just gives back, right? I mean, comforting, right? The yeah. gerund does a lot of work here. Yeah. And so, so I was, you know, anyway, I was very, very grateful because this is one of these, again, tiny provocations that come from my philosophical training because, you know, um, 
to think rigorously is not necessarily the purview of philosophy. We pretend it is, and that's why philosophers are insufferable. But, um, but it, is, it is an opportunity to at least throw stuff at the wall. And you know, the, or the way artists do, my training always brings me to these little details. And, and Carmen ran away with it. And it was, I, I'm so grateful because it's such a, to me, it's generative. Because then it bounces back to me and it becomes a comforting object to know, for me, to know that your practice is open to that kind of intrusion. Because it is an intrusion. But one of the things that um, um, Carmen said in her, you know, in that kind of polemic, right, in our in interminable emails, she goes, I've objectified many people, and I've objectified myself. <laughs> and so this is lovely. And it's, I like the many people, right, others, um, because, you know, in the mother, other, smother, right, in that play of words that we see on the wall in the artwork, but also in, in, your, in your process of erasing and adding and then... Uh, and layering, um, the palimpsest of the, what the show has be, uh, ha is presenting, um, there is a sense of, of facing an audience, and there's a sense of a broader we, right, that you are engaging. And so this is, I think it's, um, I think it's objectification at its best, so to speak, <laughs> maybe. How do you feel about that? Like, basically, it's, do I objectify myself um, and object? I think any time that I objectify someone else, I objectify myself. So I guess I do objectify myself. Um, but I, I've become increasingly more aware of when I do, and I can retrace my steps. It's almost like to, to, to work... If I'm objectifying myself, if I'm objectifying another, I can ask the question, how, do, how am I objectifying myself? And how is this leading to my own suffering or not? <clears throat> and so it's that interplay. And I don't think it ever goes away. I think it's a constant interplay of living and the art process and not the art process, maybe, you know, doing EMDR, maybe reading uh, the voices and words of others, maybe being in relationship. Mm -hmm. Those things also help me retrace, like backtrack, you know? And um, I don't know if I, I don't know if the objective is to do it faster than before, you know, I have like, we're always like weather changing, right? But um, uh, I think, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm grateful that I can recognize it. And I think if the art has taught me anything, it's, it's that, and maybe the art can share that tool with others. But I don't know if I have that expectation of the work. It is a hope, um, but not a demand from the art. I would say too, just going back to like the title itself as like a visitor, there was something, I mean, like the title was a really big <laughs> part of, you know, um, like you said, it's an artwork, you know, it was like the final work in the, on the checklist. Well, and then that changed once we opened and the we, show. And it was through our conversation that it came mm. to be, like that, that it emerged because it, it was like you, I, I think you asked me like, what's real or something like that, like what, what feels real to you or what feels yeah, because you were like, should it be called ripe child? You know, there were all yeah. these other things. But I think one thing that's really powerful about it, um, actually even as just like when we as ICALA talk about the show, we have to say the title. And there's something about it that like you're either in reading it, um, you know, you're either, someone's either saying it to you or you're saying it out loud to somebody else. So I think there's this like really wonderful way in which like, it is also an artwork that like implies the, you know, not just because it uses we does it imply other, but it, you know, another body or something. Um, so I just wanted to like share that in light of the title because I do think it actually, wow. it's like a tool that's yeah. used or like I find like writing our newsletters. It's mm -hmm. like, I won't abandon you. I see you, we are safe is now up, but I see, you know, and you're like, oh, like you have to say it's it. It's an incantation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and like that's powerful. Also, by the way, I mean, let's be real here. 
how is the show even going to ever end? You know what I mean? How is Carmen going to do once the show is done? Because if we all are implicated in the process and it has so, so much to do with interiority and with intersubjectivity. Anyway, we'll talk about this in a second. <laughs> I want to just go to ontology, which is more boring, but it's essential, with, especially in, 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 in this context. What is an artwork? What is an artwork and what is a process and then what is a performance, right? I mean, I think it was Simone Lee that uh, said a couple of years ago in an in a inter interview that at some point she realized as a grad student that her studio was not a performance. So she didn't have to perform for anyone that shows up, right? It was not a part of the, the work. The studio was where she worked, but it wasn't sort of like a set for something bigger or different. And so these boundaries are interesting if they exist at all, right? I mean, and how we cross them. Um, but w with this show, it's, um, I mean, we have static works in the show, right? So we actually have, sh uh, I mean, this is me but doing forensics, um, where I look at uh, where the uh, works came from, and some of them are, but do belong to uh, collectors. You know, a collector is not going to allow you for you to modify the work, or if they do, I want to know all about it. <laughs> um, so there are these thresholds, right? These, again, fault lines of possibility and freedom, right? Because... I mean, in, within philosophy, we talk about being versus becoming, and this is sort of Heraclitian, but it's, you know, it's also, you know, very much post-structuralist uh, uh, conversations, did lose in Gattery, Foucault, and so forth. And so the, the question is, is this a being, or is it a becoming, or could it be both? And then how do we conceive of an artwork that keeps changing, you know, the, you know, the uh, show as a process, I mean, as you say, you have to be very nimble as a curator, and we will talk about curation in a minute, right, as a sort of our third topic, and you know the institutional context. But just process an object, maybe as a dichotomy. I'm just gonna say something that's like, that, <laughs> that maybe to like add to that, is that like I would actually advocate that there is very, there are very few works in the show that are static. And I would like maybe question what that, mm -hmm. like what you mean when you say static, mm -hmm. because I, I think that like, you know, even to your, when like those, those drawings with the post-its, like those, those are active, like those are, you know, um, I don't know, yeah. I think like yeah. just maybe to question even like, because it lives in a collector's home, does that make it static? No, no, I just imagine that, you know, it's, uh, it's not to be tampered with or moved around or I don't know, but I mean, um, and then there, there seems to be layers to the potential dynamics, right? And so uh, that might not have to be a frontier at all. Maybe the, I mean, I would be lovely if collectors, let's clap for collectors who don't mind you doing whatever the hell you want. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 was but, an, it was an interesting thing that came up because yeah. there were t two works that were going to be the, the um, uh, archetypes. And they they are infested with some bugs. They're currently at my home studio. Mm. I put them under the sun, and there were still bugs. <laughs> but it's but it's interesting because it's like oh we can't bring them in because there's other works they'll infect other works and this whole thing and it'll spread and this and that was kind of interesting to me as well. Um, but also like a lot of the works are uh, made with organic materials. They have a lifespan. Um, but, you know, where is the art? I think that's the question. For mm -hmm. me, the art is the process. Like, t for me, the most interesting work that I'm surprised by is the egg piece um, because it's really taught me to tend to a show, like, like how, how to tend, you know, like that tending to the flock has sort of moved into the work. And something that I've wanted, that I had asked the work at some point was, how can I, you know, um, bring those things that I do in the art into relationships and how can the things I do in relationships come back into the work? Mm -hmm. How can it mm -hmm. be like this, this co more continuous conversation? Mm -hmm. um, Daniela, one of the collaborators, Daniela um, Leha Quintanero has really been speaking to the spiral and I've been really influenced by that as well. Um, this and, is one of yeah. the best pitches I've ever had. Um, yeah. So how, there's the <laughs> half of it still here. Um, this is fascinating because you brought it back to relationships or, or, yeah. or collaboration. And so, I mean, this will be in a second a good segue f into the topic of the institution and then, you know, the collaboration between a curator and an artist. We know we, and we have you both here in, on the 
you know, in the uh, middle, or in the playroom, or what was it? Play space, <laughs> yeah. Play space. Um, but um, <laughs> I was just going to mention, uh, Stanley Covell, one of my favorite philosophers, once said that preparing to make art is already art, right? And so um, and I think that's a powerful thing to say, but it, then the question is, when does art end? And, you know, that was kind of like what I was mentioning earlier. Mm -hmm. When does the show end, right? I mean, it's uh, the proposition of not yeah. abandoning and seeing and uh, being safe or reassuring, uh, you know, a, a certain abstract or concrete we that we're that safety is um, on the horizon <laughs> um, is something that we really don't want to end, right? But anyway, let's just get to the institutional context, right? So. I've written about curating, and actually the first talk we did here, probably, I don't know, six, seven years ago, was about, was on the question, and this was a debate between me and another philosopher, is, cura is a curator an artist, right? And my, my thesis, which I've defended in writing, and I keep defending in the philosophy world, is that a curator is an artist. So take it, Amanda. Uh, now, <laughs> now, <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> Here's, I mean, of course, yet another fault line, right? Because, you know, we think of it as a dichotomy and also, hey, I mean, Michael Kowalski, one of these uh, philosophers that writes about curating, says that there's custodial curators and activist curators. So an activist curator will be the nimble one that basically responds to the artist and becomes a part of the work and is really, really involved and then yeah. ends up making creative decisions. And then there's the custodial one who, who is more of a, um, um, just a minder and, you know, a facilitator, right? And so it's interesting on many levels because this is, you know, the funny thing when you when it says we're safe in the in the title, I always think, wait a minute, we're always safe for the ICA. That's like redundant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if this was LACMA, I need it on the wall in big letters. Just yeah, <laughs> please, I need disclaimer because the entire thing is a disclaimer, right? Don't don't you worry, we're good. But um, we are good at the ICA. So then. It's almost like a contrived sense of drama that we don't even have to deal with at the ICA because the ICA is that kind of nimble institution that is already making us safe. And you know, the, the shows that has, have happened here and at the Santa Monica Muse uh, Museum of Art, because, you know, which was the previous iteration, are mind-boggling in their span, in their you know, sort of revolutionary spirit and everything. So I'm just curious, you know, how does it play out for you as a curator? I mean, I'm, you spoke of it as a new frontier, obviously, for you know, your practice, but it's exciting and it's interesting. That it's like um, I think the same invitation that like Carmen had to me of like push like for me to push your edges I like had the same invitation back and I think as like I would like to think we can talk to some other artists who I've worked with that I've taken the more like active curatorial approach or that kind of like involved um, in the sense of like if it supports the work um, and there is such an opportunity. I was at formerly at like an encyclopedic collecting institution where like the questions were different, the types of opportunities and types of work that you could present were different or there were different parameters. Um, but I, I think one thing maybe um, just to say when you were talking about the end of the show, it's like I just wanna look at Carmen and say, I won't abandon you, I see you, we are safe because, and I mean that, um, <laughs> making eye contact with you. Um, I, I say that because I also see um, exhibitions as like, this is like the start of a relationship, you know? And I think that, um, and the start of like new questions that we, we are asking ourselves as institutions, like what does it mean for an artist to take up residence? What does it mean to, to host? Um, uh, to be a place of transformation, to be a place of gathering, to be a place of learning. So um, maybe just to go back to like what you what you started at the beginning of just saying like to think about the end. It like doesn't actually like the closing of the show makes me sad because I've loved to live with it here. But I also like am so excited about the direction that your work is going, and we get to be a part of that now. Like what a gift, yeah. you know? It's it's also like the to the question of the curator being an artist. I thought it was really interesting. I remember, you know, I've, I've always thought of the best curators, like, or curators that I enjoy working with. Um, they, uh, you know, they, they, they're using, like I, like, I and the work become the material for the construction of the narrative or the, the show that you're putting together. And so in many ways, 
you know, this work was in my living space. It was in my bedroom, in my kitchen. If I had curated it, I'd have my bed in here. I'd be like sleeping here. It would be different. <laughs> so, you know, it would be a different show. And so I think uh, there's mindfulness in how the work is able to be communicated to others that I might not privilege, let's say, you know. And it was really interesting um, to have the miniature model, because we had a, an, an event two days ago that was uh, basically a miniature model with another one of the collaborators, Daniela Leja Quintanero, and her um, use of the objects um, was a different curation. It had a different perspective. So I think there's a, there's a voice that, that is a collaborative voice that's in conjunction with my sort of questioning. So if, if I'm in conversation with, for me, like the art as a spiritual source, back and forth, you're in conversation with my conversation, you know, to share it. So it, it, it kind of, for me, it becomes like this generative way of like expanding outward. Um, I don't know. What do you feel? Oh, no. I mean, this is very exciting. You know, when I saw the miniature of the show, which is two, two nights ago, there was a walkthrough with a miniature version of this show and everything was too specked and all the colors and everything. It was absolutely stupendous. And it's kind of like, oh, you took both pills at the same time, right? So you're not just, you don't, because you were in the, in the room here and then you just mm -hmm. walked over to Carmen's. Then immediately, of course, you know, the... Um, Sort of the kid in me was like, oh, God, can we scale it up and put it, put it at, what, what was that facility uh, for sports called? Oh, Dodger Stadium. Can we just like blow it the hell up and make it even, you know, <laughs> that's sort of the mega version of the show? And so, you know, the sky would be the limit. But um, you, I think, own up to the infestation aspect, which I like. I also feel, look, my GPS, if I'm at the Pacific Palisades at 2 o'clock in the morning, it tells me to go, how to go to the ICA. Like, we automatically, I don't even work here. That's how often I come, right? <laughs> so then I am very, very cognizant of the pool of the, of the place and how welcoming, how, you know, op, um, open it is to these possibilities, right? And so as an artist, it's probably very generative. There's something from the book I wanted to just mention from the uh, Sherry Irvin book. At the end, she, she humors the idea of this, um, of the changing of the rules, right? The nimble artist. So basically, she's kind of like predicting Carmen's show, right? I mean, she has her own examples, and there's, there's the arch arch historical examples. But essentially, what if the rules change, right? I mean, what does the institution do, and how do we respond to it, and everything? And so she makes a suggestion, and this is where, where philosophers get annoying and categorical, because, you know, she just feels compelled to have to solve it. So in terms of preserving the, what she calls the artist sanction, right? I mean, so this is Carmen's choice, which should, which should be sacred, right? Within the space of an exhibition. Then um, she says that the way to do this is not only be nimble in terms of allowing, right? I mean, so that's the sort of the liberal and open-endedness of, uh, on the open-ended spirit of the institution and your curating, but also to be aware of, the, of how the public apprehends that change. And so, you know, I mean, tonight is a very good example of an event that, that looks at that issue head, head on, right? I mean, we could think of this as a, as a, a giant disclaimer about, about a showing process, right? And it's also, it's also what happened with the walkthrough on Wednesday, right? So there's been a lot of programs, and, you know, I mean, Asuka is, is a, one of the culprits, but, of course, you guys, you know, instigating and organizing, and it's actually an endless uh, uh, procession that has to do with the changing of the show, but what Sherry Irvin actually says is, you should also change the wall text. You should, all of it, perpetually, right? Which is basically where she sees the radical involvement of the institution in that kind of like quick, I mean, it's, it's, it's insane, right? I mean, it's probably not tenable also in financial terms, but this is the sort of a, another frontier to, to consider. But you know, this is from the book. It's not my opinion. It's sort of like I found it interesting to apply to this, you know? Well, I think like it um, makes me think of the ways in which this work, or to me, work that that um, belongs in institutions is work that also like makes you question those or or changes the social con contracts of a museum experience. You know, like we're like come in and go and like you all as visitors go look at our staff kitchen or like um, for you like the artist is present and you're not like informed of that. You're not you know like I think there's like a yeah I loved losing my specialness. It was wonderful. I like, you know, like a uh, week three or something, it <laughs> happened. <laughs> and then uh, when I when I say that, it's like, you know, like first it was like the first week, it was like, oh, like the like the artist is here, mm -hmm. Carmen is here. And then it was like, oh, it's just Carmen. Yeah, Carmen's like, here. Like, Car Carmen's here. She's like, you know, 
Um, Makes it more human, though. And there's still things. There's st like, like, and then there's like things that like are wants that I have to navigate too. Like, I want to bring my chicken, and I can't. Or like, I know that I should not. Well, it wasn't that you couldn't. That, that was an interesting thing, okay. Carmen. It was, it was the thing. No, yes. it was. It was. It was only like mo like Mondays and Tuesdays, and I was like, no, it needs to be public. Well, I will well, no. But what happened was, I was like, Carmen, you can bring your chickens. Like that's totally fine. I've let out. Like you know, when we first started the show, it was like Carmen. Like that's you know, we know that that's part of you. you. And then. Have a look at ICALA. So we have our offices of our tiny and mighty team are right up there, right here, and that's it. And so this is all like open and Carmen has a chicken. And I think it was like, you know, that was like a learning for me of like, oh, I let everyone know like the chicken's gonna be there, but we didn't know how long we didn't. Okay, so chicken was here all day. And then I have like stuff that was like, hey, I have meetings. And I want to, like, if, if I, should, I can take them from home, but I just need a heads up or I, like, you know, and then I was, like, oh, my gosh. Like, it's not just, like, Carmen says it's okay, so we're going to do it. And it's not just, like, oh, I say it's okay because the artist that we're presenting says it's okay. But then it was, like, well, Carmen, okay, if this is about relationships and the relationships of the institutions and the individuals that are here, it's like, an how do we... family system. Yeah. It's, a, it's, 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 it's an emotional be It's, like, a, like, one being it becomes one psyche. Yeah. So I feel like that was like, that's a good example of like one where we just were like, oh, oh. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. <laughs> oh, I wish it could have been, you know, like, or I wish you could have had your chickens every day. But then I also wish, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, but that was a negotiation that happened like on site in process. It wasn't one that was like, here's our rule book for how we're going to deal with chickens in the gallery. When I visited you know? uh, um, Carmen's studio, I held it, uh, one of the chickens and the, the, I have, a, you know, there's a picture, it remains in history, in the, in the record. I sent it to my mom and she's like, um, so which part of this is art? Because we used to keep chickens and we didn't call it art. And I was like, well, <laughs> you should have. You should have put their <laughs> eggs in the gallery. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's just engage the larger coop now, because um, uh, we definitely want to field a bunch of questions. So I think there'll be mics running around, so to just uh, raise your hand and we're going to try to locate you, but please, because there's a lot of troublemakers in this room, and I'm sure there's burning questions, and don't you worry about <laughs> offending anyone. Also, this speech is amazing. Please, somebody finish it. You walk to the gallery, the museum, and you have chickens. Like, where do you live? <laughs> like, what area that you have chickens and you live this close? Oh, I, I, I live in Boyle Heights. Okay. Just across the bridge. Okay. Um, yeah, and I kind of want to add something to that one because it's like um, one of the experiences is of bringing the egg and being like, this is my art now, and that there's like an anxiety there that that's like, that's it? And I have to kind of walk myself back and say like, no, actually like, this is the art. Like, you know, bringing the egg. There's a lot of like, uh, yeah. I, I really like how you honestly talk about anxiety in your work oh. and even here. Thank you. We all have it. <laughs> okay, good. It's a shared condition. Yeah. Babe, let's hang out with your anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> you first. Okay, um, I'll take it. <laughs> so I was thinking about um, uh, specifically the title, um, the shift in philosophy, and then also uh, the beginning of psychoanalysis. Uh, specifically, the title of Gauguin's painting, uh, "Where Do We Come From? What Are We? Where Are We Going?" And then juxtaposing that with your title. Um, which moves from I to we, right? Which I think is fascinating. I won't abandon you, I see you, we are safe. And I'm wondering if the, the change, the shift between I and we, or acknowledging that you know, there is an integrated self and an individuated self is in some way, um, if you see it as in reference to where we are as a more anxious society. I don't know if, if, if it's, I mean, we are a more anxious society, but maybe like, I really, I really believe that we're, I mean, especially like, we're like moving towards, it's like, 
again, like a, I don't know, I, 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 I would hope a relearning of our, like, let's say, like indigenous knowledge, a relearning of things that we maybe forgot, you know, in the time span of like the human being. Um, I don't think it's so, so linear. I think that maybe it's, you know, we, we are able to remember and like maybe the anxiety has blocked and then we've reached like a point. It, like I thought, I think even like our shared um, trauma of COVID, <laughs> You know, like definitely like maybe for some of us, like gave us like some shit, you know, like that, that moment to pause, to take pause. Um, I don't know, what, what do you all think? I mean, I've been thinking about this because of the, um, um, the you know, already an article um, written by someone here in the room, Linda Dove, a friend of mine, um, a lovely, Stuff in the article, but, but one one aspect that gets discussed in there, which of course is a it is a uh, matter of conversation, even in the walkthrough two nights ago, was the network itself, right? The sort of like the um, spilling out of the eye, basically, or just sharing, and you know that eye with, across. And you know, again, f you know, feminist discourse engages this, psychoanalysis engages this, and then also certain you know radical political move movements uh, look to towards that kind of. Um, uh, vanishing point or hope. Um, so I think that it's it's still a tension, and I think you embody the tension because there's a lot of Carmen everywhere, and that's undeniable. But there's also the dissolution of Carlem of uh, the Carmen, um, and then the dissolution maybe of also the uh, you know the museum visitor, especially the pulverizing of expectation when you do multiple visits. It's almost like you should have somehow come up with a way to compel people to come at least three times over the, you know what I mean, that kind of thing. But of course, you know, in hindsight, you couldn't have like front loaded it. But I wish everyone got to do this and see, you know, the eggs just, you know, uh, accumulate and then writings on the wall, no pun, so forth. I hope everyone comes and comes back and comes back again to our exhibitions. I think that's also like we are, like when you come back, you're also changing, like as much as like the exhibition is changing and this and like some, some cases, you know, it's like really wonderful, like Linda, you know, talking about like the books are gone or like these moments of like, you know, what it looked like at the beginning. And that was always like shared really openly um, about the show was like, and that's why so many things like have, activities have also happened here of inviting folks like in. But I also think when you like see work or read something or, you know, I think like, when you go back to something, you're also changed. So there's like that context too of like honoring, and I, I, I see that with your work, Carmen, of like you going back to the work that was, like served one purpose in your studio and home and serves a new purpose here. Yeah. But that's because you're, you're different it, too. It, it's, it's the spiral, it continues. I think I was, I was thinking about, um, oh, I forgot, I already forgot, but it was, it was just, it, it, it had to do with the collaborators and just coming back to even previous notions that I had had when I made the work and then being able to like reevaluate that again, um, having the work continue to teach me. Like, like, like actually, yeah, again, I'm gonna use that example of like, what does it mean to be, you know, an artist having your show here in LA, like in such close proximity. Now I, now I know and I think it's, but I don't know everything. I know more, yeah. but there's more yet to be known, even as the work kind of continues. Justin, join the karaoke. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the work, I mean, I've just had this quick walkthrough and the work is beautifully presented and the work itself is very, you know, organic, uh, messy at times. Um, natural, intuitive, um, and it's presented in a very clean way, right? And so, um, so it's like perfectly held in a way. Um, it's it's very cleanly held. And so, um, I guess my my interest is is in the institution being this space that contrasts with this organic. Um, messy kind of, and you mentioned Carmen, you know, if this was in my house, it'd be look a lot different, you know, and, and you negotiating with a curator who is now the artist as well. Um, how do you, 
how do you see your roles in that relationship as you, I mean, and that if we were to be honest, that kind of contrast creates value, right? So to present a messy kind of like intuitive um, God messaging kind of work in an institution that's very cleanly presented and very carefully managed. Um, how do you guys see your roles in that relationship where it's your job essentially, um, Amanda, to kind of focus that work or, or, or kind of contextualize it <clears throat> in a way that creates that almost wealth. You know, it's, it's may not be like a, a cash wealth, but it's a critical wealth. And how do you guys relate to those two things? Well, I think the value of the work is always the value of the work. It stays, it stays. Now, like, if I was to curate my own show, it would be like my home space and it would be full. I mean, there's, from what you see, this is a small selection of like, the many multiples, but it might be unreadable. Um, and that's where I think the uh, institutions, uh, what is it? Um, my gosh, I'm on the artist council and I don't remember. The, the um, statement, the mission, <laughs> the mission, <laughs> the mission. Yeah, mission. So, you know, it's, it's interesting because it's not in my home, even though I've been almost living here. But then there's the mission. And I think that that's kind of an interesting thread. I, I mean, how do you feel about that? I mean, I think that there, there was something, I mean, there was, again, like just going back to like what the invitation was, which was to present your work here and what's the way that we can do that. Um, and I think there was never, it was always like a conversation, right? But it was like, um, I do think to Carmen's point of like, if it was in your, like, like legibility and what are like the expectations of that, I think like we navigated that a bit, but also like, um, yeah, I mean, I think even like when we first were installing, it was like, Carmen was like, why is that wall so empty? And it was like, oh, because I think also like, I, like, I think giving like folks a place to breathe, but also giving the show a space to breathe because we didn't know <laughs> what was gonna, like we didn't know what was gonna go in. So if you saw it when there were books everywhere, the one, I mean, I came into the office after a, the Saturday that you were in and it was like, I, uh, the floor was covered. You couldn't walk and not step on a book. And I, I was like, it, I loved, it like, was amazing. Like basically having like these things that would happen, like these books, and then I heard that, like maybe like Oscar would send you a picture. Are you cool Oscar's with like, this? this is happening this weekend. This ha I was like, okay. And I liked that relationship where it was like, are you cool with this? And then I was like, oh, maybe I should ask for consent. <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah. just not. And then it was like, oh well, okay. What kind of relationship do I want to have with Amanda? Is it is it like, do I ask for forgiveness, you know, after the fact, mm -hmm. or like, do I want to have communication and consent throughout the exhibition. Mm -hmm. And that's like something that I think in the collaboration aspect actually ties back to the tools. Because I think my previous self would have been just like, yeah, I'm just gonna do it. And then we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? And, yeah. and, 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 and I wonder, I mean, that's like, that's, I wonder if, if um, I don't know if the word immaturity is, is that, but I like, I mean, there's, there's a value to that, that immaturity, but also there's a value to have, like being able to like have that conversation and uh, I don't know, consider your feelings and thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's like, I, I, I guess too, it's like we're talking about, like there's one thing of, of addressing like the exhibition as we like see it and walk into it now, but then there's another to your point, Rawson, of like the exhibition as an artwork. And I think like, 
to me, what's really interesting is I think in institutions, at least in art institutions and more traditional um, art institutions, at least the one that I came from and, and have worked in in the past is like, we're really good at carrying, like we, we've got it down of caring for drawings and photographs and sculpture and um, these kind of more traditional categories of art history. Um, that are relevant, but not the only things that are relevant. And I think museums themselves, we're still learning how to care for the living, both living artists, living artworks, um, and our own staff. And so I think there's something with this show that is like, like you know, it's asking, I'm not saying it's solving any of those, it's actually bringing to light more questions of like how to be an institution that cares for the living. Um, and I think, and like I said, that also goes to our staff, which, as that's why the rooster, you know, situation was really interesting because it meant like, oh, I'm not just caring for like, you know, we also have an exhibition where there's like flies. If we don't turn that show on, fl like flies come out and might then gravitate toward Carmen's work. And, you know, there's that stuff, but it's also, yeah, it's that like, I think that caring for the living both as object, as artist, as exhibition, and then as staff, like that to me, I don't know, it's ho hopefully like is, is what the show is like also pushing beyond just like it feeling like a sterile version of what you might experience in Carmen's house. <laughs> Should we jump to another question or two because we probably have five minutes on the clock. Um, anybody? love to go kind of back to this I we moment and kind of talk about so um, you know uh, in this conversation you've talked a lot about process you've also Carmen talked about objectifying yourself and kind of pulling yourself out and looking back at your inner child like um, when I heard you talk about your title earlier it was really interesting to me because you broke it down into phases of like your your past life about like your past child um, self and, um, and so when I heard you talk about that, I felt like when you were saying like, I won't abandon you, I see you, when we are safe, like that to me sounds like you've claimed her, like you've claimed this inner child from like looking objectively to her and now you've owned her. And I guess I would love to like put that back on you and to like hear more about like, where do you feel like this body of work is? Are you in like the, I won't abandon you, I see you, we are safe. Are you looking backward, are you looking forward? I would love to hear more about that. I, I don't know what happens, but I know that the collaborations have been really surprising to me in giving me um, more trust in constantly changing conditions. Um, I, I still use the title, so I think I'm both in process and then just with this added tool of, uh, yeah, like more trust of being held uh, by others as well. So I, I, it's, it's kind of a little bit of both. I don't think that there's any resolution for me. Like I don't feel like, oh, I, like I feel like I've got this, but uh, now I do have these tools. They're not, they're not going away, but I do think that the, it's, it's, it's like a spiral, like these situations will come back again and I have these tools and now maybe I can ask um, like others, like even just get more comfortable with asking others for uh, added tools, you know, uh, a greater extent to like this idea of like community. Um, and community can be very small, actually. That's like something that we talked about. Community can be a couple of more people. I don't know if that answers the question, but maybe, I mean, it can be, it can be a follow-up. <laughs> I'll just say a quick thing about the we are safe part, you know, yeah. because I mentioned how, uh, in terms of this particular institution, there's no sense of institutional infringement or, or encroachment, right? And so there is a sense of safety um, and specifically in, being create on creative terms. But there's the flip side of that coin, which is art is not supposed to be safe and we don't want it to be, right? I mean, we want it to uh, ruffle feathers, no pun. Um, and, then, and then we make that kind of mess and we are proud of it. I mean, you're running away with it, right? I mean, uh, somewhere in the title should be, I shall push your buttons. Um, <laughs> and right, and so, so um, when you say we are safe, it's kind of like a, almost like a cheat because it's, it's, the whole point is that there's a destabilizing. Well, well, well we are safe to misbehave. Uh, yeah, I get, yeah, 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 that kind of thing. 
but anyway, that speaks to one third of your question. <laughs> okay, maybe one quick question, and then um, we could just booze up. Cedric Tai, one of our collaborators. I hope I can form this question. So just some context. One of the collaborations I wanted to do is really hidden. It's not possible to be seen. Um, we did a Q&A ourselves, but there was a point where you were asking me, like, well, what do you think? There was books all over the ground, and you'd just written on the walls. And I was thinking, well, how did Amanda feel about that? And you're like, all right, so I don't feel good about these. And I was describing, I think it's just too much. Whenever you see more information next to artwork, it just means that you're going to have to see it through the lens that you kind of pr uh, presented with it. And I said, like, is it possible for you to get rid of it? And then you were very excited. But then you were like, no, I can't. I physically can't. And then I was trying to think about, like, well, what is this about? Like, should I help you through that? And then I said to you, I'm a collaborator. I <laughs> might be able to paint over it. Would that work? And then you got really excited. But we ended up doing this thing where I just assumed, like, I just need to know where the paint is, and I just need to ask for permission. Uh -huh. And then we can get this done. But the reality is, any artwork that is anywhere near fresh paint that's on loan, kind of about collectors, it becomes this admin nightmare. And now is at the point where you just asked me tonight, is it okay if we never paint over it? Let's just don't do it, because the tape, like, I, I agree the tape doesn't look right. I mean, do you want to add context? Or yeah, I? I feel like I should ask context <laughs> okay, here. Okay, please ask context. So, as the ghost collaborator <laughs> on the project, um, there were, uh, like, something I noticed in Carmen through the process of the collaborations and of the exhibition, um, those drawings are relatively new, I would say. Like, not relative, like maybe a month ago. Um, they were like a month and a half into the show. Um, yeah, and it's just the two flourishes. They're not like the ones in the main wall. It's like these like little ones. Yeah, they're like with the color pencil on, on the wall. And, you know, it was actually this like really interesting moment I found, which was that like, Carmen had like hosted and fostered all of these other collaborators, like those relationships and what could happen in the show. I saw it with Mary in the books. I saw it with your program, with your Q and A of like disentangling the expectations and, and kind of questioning that of, of a public program. Um, no bean bags were involved, but you know, <laughs> it could be next time. Um, and then with Daniela of really holding like going to yoga regularly as like, you know, so I saw these ways in which like the work for Carmen had become the tending to these relationships. And then I saw this like side of you that was this like, Amanda, I'd like to draw on the wall. I'd like to write something because I am finally seeing this work. Like I'm finally seeing it as a, like, as a artist in residence every day at ICA LA. And this is a thing, this is a step I wanna take. And I'm not sure if I should do it. I'm not sure, you know, there were a lot of like, I was like, where are you gonna do? Like, what, what are we talking about here? And then you did it and we're really excited about it. And I did it outside of the walls that we had talked about. Yes, that's So we had talked, so Amanda was like, just do it on this wall. And then Amanda came in the next day and I had done it like on three walls. And Karen was like, is that okay that I did it? And I was like, well, let's talk about it. And yeah. there was this real, like, I think for me, there was something I was trying to honor in that this was something that you in collaboration with the work and this exhibition were like making a gesture. You were, that was like this invocation. And so a part of me, like on our Zoom call with Cedric, when it was like, hey, we have this proposal to cover them. I was like, I just saw it as this covering of like, the rebellious Carmen who did this thing. And it led to this like really, like for me, I was just like, oh, I, I also wanna like question that. And then and then it was also honoring like the labor that it takes for the works that we wanted to cut, you know, that you wanted to cover. Like it, there were like, you know, having to involve other staff registrars of like going through it. If we wanted to like cover it with fresh paint, what would that be? And there was, there's like, again, that's like kind of the holding that I like, proudly and happily do as a staff member, but also trying to understand like, okay, if we're gonna go through with doing this, I really wanted to like 
understand what that was as a gesture and like and then we came up with the tape solution. Yeah. And so the, I think, and, I mean, it could still yeah. happen. And, and like the holding is interesting because then I was holding, um, like, I was like, okay, like I did this thing and like Amanda, like, and I went through this whole thing for me to write on the wall and I wrote on the walls that I, was, that I wasn't supposed to and this happened. And then I was holding like Cedric Ty as a collaborator and like the action that we had talked about. And like, I want to honor like that collaboration and then it was like, I think I'm replicating a familial pattern here of being in the middle. <laughs> am I parenting you guys? Like, am I like making you into like the parents? I might be. And this is like, again, it goes back into these patterns of behavior. But no, I mean, Justin is uh, uh, impatient to throw a question in, but I think we're running out of time. Run, quickly. Justin, I can assure you that this kind of dynamic relationship is not the norm, it's an exception, which is why we celebrated tonight here. Um, I was gonna just, you know, quick closing two sentences. You, okay, so I need to be avuncular for a second and be a boring philosopher, and the whole chicken and egg thing, come on, I mean, it's very topical. Why would you apply li the linear logic of causality to the circular logic of the biological evolution and becoming? It's a stupid question. Philosophically untenable, stupid question, right? And so um, who f comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? I mean, that's a, that's a matter of causality, but it's not a causal chain we're looking at. We're looking at a circle. And so, okay, giggle now. Um, <laughs> It's a circle of an exhibit, you know? I mean, what you showed us and you walked us through and you were talking about these concentric sort of possibilities, right? And you, and that's, and you know, I mean, I thank you, Amanda, and also Carmen for, uh, for basically writing philosophy for me um, inadvertently, right? Because it puts some of these notions and questions in per perspective in a way that I think all of us are being enriched by. So, thank you. Thank you. I feel like I also have to extend, like, Rawson, you've been such, I mean, uh, an amazing, like, friend, ally, and, um, you know, partner with ICALA, but with Carmen. I think, like, some of your, your email exchange about the comforting objects was, like, some of the first things that Carmen was, like, I'm going to forward you some, like, information about this. And so I feel so grateful to be here with you, too. So thank you so much, and thank you all for coming.